Good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Sorry. I was almost starting late this morning. I was chatting far too much to people. Yeah, I must be careful. I'll chat to you later. We'll grab. Good to see you all this morning. A few uh, notices. Um, I'm going to just go with that, that video early on. It's Christian Aid Week is coming up. So when we have a little video explaining a little bit about Christian Aid um, that we'll play now. We also have a coffee morning for Christian Aid as well. well there we go. Super video, thanks for that. I love that prayer at the end as well. I should copy that prayer down, simple prayer, praying for blessings. So please feel free. Yeah, I know Diane Edwards is doing a bunch to support Christian Aid. If there's any way that you can help, speak to Diane. There is a coffee morning on the 21st. I'm looking, 21st, am I right? Yeah, um, so it's 9.30 till 11.30. Hello, the incredible Hulk here. Good to see you. Yeah, so please get along if you can and support whatever we're doing with Christian Aid. A couple of things, other things that are going on. Um, Stephen McGee is organizing to paint the curate's house. So it would be wonderful if you can help Stephen with that. He's got a sign-up sheet at the back. So rather than just saying, oh, yes, I'd like to help, you could actually sign up for a special time to come and help. That would be helpful. Uh, also, we're continuing to put out the microgroup or small group material for the, for the next little while. If you haven't seen it already, it's a book. There we go, Walk Through the Bible by Leslie Newbigin that we're going through. There's a couple of different stages of that you can go through, whether you want to go more or less. You want to kind of de delve deeper into that or just read the book. There's some fantastic stuff in there, so I encourage you to find it. There's a couple of copies at the back. 
Uh, but it costs five pound. If you grab a copy from the back, just put, pop five pound in the pot. That would be helpful. Or, or just order it online. Uh, lots of good retail stores will be able to get it online. A copy of Walk Through the Bible. Is there any other notices that I've forgotten? This is the point of which people nod at me going, Chris, you've forgotten. Is there anything that I've forgotten for notices? Oh, that's quite impressive, that, isn't it? I feel quite good. Right, so this morning I've got another video clip for you. Has anybody seen The Good Place? Yeah, The Good Place, really, really good series about what is good and evil. And we're going to have a little look today about things. What is good and what is evil? So this is the video of The Good Place. And uh, The Good Place is where you go if you've been good. Yeah, and The Bad Place, as it says... Forget about it. Let me explain. How do we know if it's good or evil? How are we sure? During your time on earth, every one of your actions had a positive or a negative value. Depending on how much good or bad that action you put into the universe. Every sandwich you ate, every time you bought a meal, every single thing you did had an effect that rippled out over time and ultimately created some amount of good or bad. You know how some people pull into the breakdown lane in traffic and they think to themselves, ah, who cares, no one's watching. But we were watching. <laughs> anyway, during your time on Earth as angels, you calculate the total value of your life using our perfectly accurate measuring system. Only the people with the very highest score, the true cream of the crop, get to come here to the good place. What happens to everyone else, you ask? Don't worry about it. The point is, you are here because you lived one of the very best lives that could be lived. And you won't be alone. Your true soulmate is here too. That's right. Soulmate they be. One of the other people in your neighborhood is your actual soulmate. And you will spend eternity together. So welcome to eternal happiness. Welcome to the good place, sponsored by otters holding hands while they sleep. You know the way you feel when you see a picture of two otters holding hands? That's how you're going to feel every day. <laughs> Let, news for you, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun anyway. You know, and sometimes we kind of think it works like that. Some people do think it works like that. It doesn't. We're going to explain it in a minute. And to be fair, even in the good place, it doesn't work like that because he's lying to him. But I won't tell you too much on from there. Let's worship together. So please, let's stand to sing and the band are going to lead us. <laughs>
to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Lord God, I thank you for the blessing that you give us. Lord, we thank you for those things that you lead us in in our lives. Lord, we thank you for all of those. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Right, I'm going to let you sit for a little bit, but you might stand as well. Uh, We're going to talk about blessings. What blessings people have been to you. Maybe what blessing you've managed to be to others. I'm just going to have a few minutes, and I want you to turn to somebody near you. Or you can stand up as well and you can go and find somebody that you think has been a blessing. Someone that's done something really good for you. We're not going to do the bad things, otherwise that might cause some problems. We might have some fisticuffs. Yeah, I want you to find somebody and say, what is something good that they have done? Or something particularly good that they've done for you? And just say, thank you. And and share those stories with each other. We might get a couple more in at the end. So share with each other for a few minutes. Okay. That's, that's lovely. You know what? 
we're obviously doing well as church because there's lots of people saying lots of things about the blessing that we give each other and the good things that we do to other. That, I think that's a fairly good part of church, isn't it? So, uh, I mean, I had a couple. Yeah, so, so I was thinking, like, Marty's really great. My always, he always smiles at me and always welcomes me when we're in church. I always love that. Always a big smile at yeah, well, it's, well, it's like, you're going to smile at me. I was saying, uh, you're a blessing because you always smile at me and say hello to me, which is great. I'm also, Pete is always a real blessing because when I forget to give kind of a service order out and kind of chuck it at him, like late on a Saturday night, yeah, he's always very graceful with me. Yeah, I never get his wish. He just always says, it's okay, Chris. It's okay. We can sort it out. Pete is an absolute blessing. Anybody else? Something of a blessing and a good thing that people do to you. Kids are a blessing. Absolutely, they are. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Jody's smile. smile. That is a blessing. Yes. I really like that one. Anything else? It fills hugs and he keeps hold of you. Get Priya, you go on there. What's that one? Oh, I'm going to get closer so I can hear you properly. It's a good one, this one. I know it is. Your parents are all looking after me. That's brilliant. Extra chocolate later for that one, I think. <laughs> Anyone else? Just something to share with us. Oh, Kathy. Pe- people who serve tea and coffee. Oh, I forgot that one as well. People who serve us tea and coffee. Best thing about being clergy is in between the two services, somebody just hands you a cup of tea. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. Those are things that are blessing. Those things that make our life good. Those things that make us smile. Continue to be thankful for those. We're going to sing again now. The worship band are going to, are going to sing for us again. Um, and I've forgotten what this one was because it wasn't the one that was on here, was it? At your name. At your name. So please, let's stand and we're going to sing together. We'll sing Lord of all the earth. Lord of all the earth, we'll shout your name, shout your name. We're filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. The oceans roar and tumble At your name, angels will bow The earth will rejoice, your people cry out Lord of all the earth, we'll shout your name, we'll shout your name Yahweh, Yahweh, 
super take your seats right we need some young people yeah and some people that are young at heart yeah I'm best going to go around we've got lots of characters here do we recognize this gentleman who's this Buzz Light yeah right come on come to the front I want oh, I need lots and lots of volunteers yeah I need some young people and some um, some young at heart people as well go on Chris you can come and help us out go on Phil you can you can grab one of these grab a character and what I want you to do is I want you to try and stand in order of what you think is good and what you think is bad. And you can try and help people out. So who's the, the goodest is going to go up this end and the baddest is going to go down that end. There we go. I'm going I'm to give these out to everyone. Jody, would you like to be one? Jody, you can be Harry Potter. I'll let you decide where you want to go. There you go. Go on, Pete. You can be Gru. There we go. You guys decide where you think you should be. Um, there you go. You can be Elsa. There you go. I always thought that. Who, who wants to be Voldemort? Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody want to be Spider Man? Can we have a Spider Man? Anyone? Someone. You. Oh, oh you want to be Spider Man? There you go. We'll let you be Spider Man then, and we'll pass this one over. Uh, an Iron Man. We need an Iron Man and a Moana. There you go. You can beat. There we go. Go. There we go. I'll let you. There's two on there. So wh where do we think everybody should be? Oh, we've got a Mary Poppins. Well, you can have. Oh, I'll let you be Shrek. Yon, you can be Shrek. Where do we think? Are we getting ourselves organised? You might need to shuffle along. There's a lot of good people here. So where do we think? So we're starting off, we think uh, Voldemort. Voldemort, big boo for Voldemort. Yeah, I mean, Voldemort has no nose. If you have no nose, apparently, yeah, in movies, that means you're not very nice. Okay, and I've forgotten the name of this character. I've forgotten the name, but she tried to kill Paddington. She tried to kill Paddington. Boo. Can't have that. Definitely way down there. Okay. Who else have we got? Oh. So Minions and Gru. So hold those up high. If you just stand to the side, Sammy. Yeah. So Minions and Gru. Now, Minions and Gru, they're quite good fun, aren't they? And they're sort of quite nice, but they are a bit naughty at the same time. They're causing lots of havoc. Spider-Man. We reckon there's a bit in the middle. There's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff. Um, we've got Monsters, Inc., Mike Kozowski, and Sully. That's right. I'm remembering the name. Yeah, they're like, they're kind of quite good, but they are monsters, and they do scare people at night. Yeah, they're on the scarers. Elsa, why do we think Elsa's in the middle? She's, I mean, she is quite nice, isn't she? She tries to be good, but she did kind of set a whole ice thing going on. Yeah, and then, and then uh, well, Shrek's kind of quite good. He tries to be good at the end, doesn't he? But, and again, he does scare people. Iron Man, similar. Is this Moana, is it? Mo Maui. Maui. Yeah, Maui. Kind of that's from um, the film Moana, isn't it? Yeah, and that's, that's the lady in the, in the cartoon as well. Yeah, he's kind of like, he tries to be good in the end, but causes a whole load of trouble. Now we're getting to the really good people. Paddington. He's bearable. <laughs> He's bearable, yes, says Pete. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> we got the right one for Phil. <laughs> and then we've got Buzz Lightyear to Infinity and Beyond. And Woody, that's super. Yeah, Woody's pretty cool, isn't he? Yeah. 
Although there is a little bit where he's a bit nasty to, to, to Buzz, isn't he? Yeah, so, you know, there's some good things. Another good person, this, this, this is Moana, yeah, and then Mary Poppins. We've got to have Mary Poppins up this end, haven't we? Yeah, she is practically perfect in every way, as Pete, as, as Phil points out to us. And Harry Potter. Do we think Harry Potter? Sort of up this end, yeah, there's some really good stuff about him. You know, we come up with judgments about people, don't we, of whether they are good people or evil people. Yeah, based on some of the things that we do. Actually, some of a bit like that video. We kind of look at the good things that they've done or the bad things that we've done. We get this kind of cosmic calculator. And we kind of make a judgment of what they, what they have done of whether that is good or evil. Thank you to everybody that's come up. I'm going to let you sit down, yeah, at some point. You're welcome to take your picture with you as well. Yeah, if you want to frame it at home, put it up on the wall, you can do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> as we're thinking about this good and evil Kathy is going to come to us and just give us our reading for today there is good people and bad people as we're kind of going through this series in Exodus we're still setting up this, the, the whole story of Exodus in this first chapter and maybe you can spot in this chapter who was the good people I know the evil people. So the reading is taken from Exodus 1, beginning at verse 8. Then a new king, who did not know about Joseph, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become much too numerous for us. Come, we must de deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, will join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Ramesses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with hard labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shifra and Puah, When you help the Hebrew women in childbirth and observe them on the delivery stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. And verse 20. So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. This is the word of the Lord. Peter God. Okay, could you spot the evil people and the good people there? Right, evil person is? The, 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 the new king, isn't he? Yeah, the new king is definitely the evil people. And this, this theme continues through the book of Exodus, that the new king is the kind of... He's representing everything that's evil. Yeah, and what he does is evil. Yeah, and maybe, and, and the reason why he is evil, what, what's the reason why he is evil? Sorry? He's what? Afraid of the Israelites, fear. Yeah, that, that comes into it, yeah. And he makes them slaves. That's what he does, and that makes him, that's, that's an evil thing. But it says this thing, particularly says he did not know about Joseph. He did not know the story of God that was building amongst his people. He did not know. The previous thing did know. And then we go back into that previous bit of the story and we know about Joseph and what happened with him. Joseph knew God and heard God. And because he heard God, his brothers got jealous and push him, pushed him off into slavery. He continued to know and be faithful to God while in Egypt, even when Potiphar's wife accused him. And he continued to stay faithful. And then when the Pharaoh came to him and had with a dream and wanting an interpretation of that dream, Joseph never says, I interpret this dream. He says, God 
interprets this dream. Joseph knows God. He knows what's right. He continues to follow that. And because Joseph continues to follow that, he receives that blessing. And remember we talked last week, this introduction of this book is, is kind of a mirror of Genesis 1. That they are fruitful, multiply and fill the earth. The blessing follows those people who are good. Those people of God. Those people who remember and know who God is. That leads them to being good. But a new king comes who does not know what happened with Joseph. And because he does not know, we see evil come into this place. Yeah, and again, it, it echoes that sense of the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. Those that know God and those that don't know and understand who God is. And in this, we also see a sense every time the new king puts his edicts out, it creates division. Division amongst those Egyptians and those foreigners. How, how often have we heard that? Yeah, often, that creating division between us who are good and those who we don't know, actually. Yeah, and we blame them for the problems that are happening. There's also a division in that they divide between the male babies and the female babies. Division is come in. But what we know about God's blessing, it draws us together. It doesn't create division. It creates unity. It creates blessing, fruitfulness, multiplication, and filling the earth. That's what we know about that blessing. So I've got this uh, illustration. So I'm going to grab Bethany and maybe Sam. Sam's always a good volunteer. Go on, Sam, you come and help us. And, uh, and I want you to, um, I want you to be my, oh, there we go. I'll try and untie this Why Sam's coming. Right, if you get each end of this rope, and uh, I want one of you to pull that way, and one of you pull that way. Don't pull too hard, because you'll pull each other over. Yeah, but um, what happens, if the two of you pull, what happens to that rope? It breaks, it gets tense, doesn't it? There's a tension. When one of you're pulling that way and you're pulling that way, when you're trying to be divided, you pull apart, don't you? And it may be that you two talk to each other and you're really nice and you come to an arrangement and say, we're going to go in such and such a direction. And you might sort of get that. You enjoying this rope as well. You might get to a certain direction together by cooperation, but not easy. This is, is what God does. If God pulls, if God pulls, if God pulls, what's happening here? What's happening to you two? What's happening? You're getting closer, don't you? That's a sense of what God does. Is we, if we are open, that you're brilliant, you've done ever so well, I'll let you sit down now. Yeah, if we are open to what God says to us, to speak to us as Joseph was we will be drawn closer together. Now, who's the goodies in this story? Did you spot the goodies? The midwives. Yeah, and what does it say their attitude is? They fear God. Now, it's a fear. It's not like a fear as in running away, like something bad's happened, I'm going to go and have a leg it. It's a fear, God, because God is awesome and all-knowing and knows all things. Yeah, and I fear him because... I know that's where I should be. And let's face it, the midwives are seeing this Pharaoh do all these other horrible things to, all, to these people in Egypt. They might fear uh, the, the new king, might they? But they don't. They fear God and say, no, that's not what I'm going to do. And they draw people back together. So as we go through this book of Exodus, continue to go through this book of Exodus... Good and evil is represented by those people who don't know God and those people who fear God. The, the, the goodies and the baddies, for want of a better word, is how we know and understand God. And let's face it, there's only one letter difference, isn't there? 
between good and God. We don't believe, like, I mean, the good place is a good kind of, it's a good program for a bit of fun. We don't believe that. Sometimes we do in society. Sometimes we think there's this sort of giant cosmic calculator that counts up all the things that we do that are good or bad. What we believe is that God is good. And if we want to follow in God's blessing, we follow God. And God will not separate us, but he will pull us together. He will draw us together. We will know God's blessing because we will love each other. We will care for each other. In the New Testament, it talks about the greatest ever commandment. The greatest commandment, and often people quote this, that that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, our soul, our strength, and all our mind. And the second, we love our neighbor as ourselves. Right, I don't like that. I don't like it because it misses out a really crucial bit in between. That it says, and the second is like this. Jesus is drawing together those two commandments. Because to love God is to love our neighbor. If we don't If we love God with all our heart, soul, strength and mind, we will love our neighbour as ourselves because that's what it will produce. And if you don't love your neighbour as yourselves, then you're not loving God with your heart, soul, strength and mind. The second is like this. It draws us together as we continue to try and be good. We follow God who is good, who is truth, who is right. And he will draw us together as people, as church, as a community. That's what we believe. And that's what Exodus is going to teach us. That as we follow God, he draws us into complete unity and blessing with each other. What was really great is how much you guys said is blessings from each other. That says something about this congregation. That God is a part of this. That you are excited about all the things that draw us together. And hopefully there wasn't too much about the things that you got frustrated. We'll pray about them. Fortunately, Pete is really graceful. Yeah, and helps me out and I forget to give him a schedule for the morning. So let me pray that that is upon us. Lord God, you are good. You are right. You draw us together to be a part of your kingdom. Let us love you with our heart, our soul, our strength and our mind. And through that, let us love one another as we love ourselves. In the name of Christ. Amen. And remembering what we do next. (laughs) We're going to sing again. So the band are going to come up and join us. And we're going to sing together. So please stand and we will sing uh, You Call Me Out. <laughs> cool, should we stand together? You call me out upon the water, the great
Please take your seat. And Prudence, just invite Prudence to come and lead us in prayer. Uh, we're very used in the Anglican Church to being told to sit down, close our eyes and put our hands together. But actually, it's a very unusual way of praying in the rest of the world. So today, we're going to use our bodies for praying. And um, I'm not going to ask you to lie prostrate, but I am going to ask you to stand. And in praise, we lift our hands to God. Almighty God, we worship you. We praise you and give thanks to you for all your loving kindness towards us. You are King of kings, Lord of lords, above all things, in all things. You are our Father, our protector, our shelter, our teacher and our comforter. We worship you. Now. Put your hands down, close your eyes and bow your head because we're going to pray a prayer of repentance. Heavenly Father, we bow before you now in repentance that we have fallen so far short of your plans and desires for our lives. We come in confidence that through the death and resurrection of your Son, our Saviour Jesus, we can be forgiven when we truly repent. We ask for the Holy Spirit to convict us and teach us how to live to your glory. Now, facing this way with your eyes open, reach out as we pray for the world. God.
God of justice and of peace, we pray for peace in this world. We particularly pray for peace in Ukraine, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan. Change the hearts of President Putin, all those involved in Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, and those still causing dissent and conflict around the world. May we see you, Lord Jesus, as the Prince of Peace ruling in these lands. Now let's pray for the South, which is basically where the seat of government is in this country, as we pray for the country. And again, reach out. Heavenly Father, we pray for this country. We thank you for our Queen, her long life, and her love of you. Grant her health and enjoyment of all the festivities planned for this summer, and may she know your blessing on all she does. We pray to you for our government. Grant them your wisdom that they may govern with integrity, truly desiring the common good for this, the United Kingdom. We lift all new councillors elected on Thursday that they too may govern with integrity. Finally, let's face the back out towards Birthstone and beyond as we pray for ourselves. Creator of the universe, you care for each and every person you've placed here in your wonderful creation, for which we thank you as we watch spring bring, bring colour and song into our lives. We ask for your healing hand on all those we know who are unwell in body, mind or spirit. We pray too for the family and friends of Alan Ward, Regina Francis Hansen, June Bickerstaff, Margaret Rose, and Sandra Knowles, all of whom have died recently. May they be remembered with love. And finally, Father, we pray for Birthstone and Beyond, where you have called us to share your love and the good news of Jesus to all we meet. We pray particularly for the Jubilee weekend event and that we would be bold in asking people to come. We pray all these things in Jesus' name and to your glory. Amen. Thank you for those prayers. Where's, where's Sammy? Where's Sammy? Wave to, yeah, you are, Sammy. Your favourite bit now. We've got an action song. You always like when we do the action songs, don't you? So we have an action song. Please join in. I have heard there's some people who don't join in the actions on the action song. <laughs> Honestly. I know I have. I have heard that. Who is that? Me. <laughs> it's usually me. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so please, Sarah's going to come through. Bethany's going to come help us. Yeah, and we can join in the action song. Everybody feel that you can get together. If you need a bit more space, come in this bit down here. There's loads of space here for you to jump and move about. Yeah, Bess, you come up and help me. Okay, perfect. Um, can everybody else stand? E Seriously, you don't have to do the actions. But if you would like to, lots of people do, let's go for it. He's the one who makes the sun shine. He's the one who puts the moon in the sky. one who makes me dreams of mine. He's the one who makes me smile. Day by day, Jesus, you're my superhero. You're my son, my best friend. Jesus, you're my superhero. You're my star, my best friend. Yeah.
Some extra special dancing and a proper good smile there at the end as well. That's super. Let me just pray a blessing. As we pray a blessing, let's be that blessing to each other. Those things that we mention to each other. Those things that are of God. Let's want those for each other. Because with God comes God's blessing on us all. The blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you all, now and forevermore. In the name of Christ, amen.